Brain of Britain, the nationwide general knowledge contest, chaired by Russell Davis. Hello, thank you, and a very warm welcome to the BBC's North of England headquarters in Salford. We're paying the first of four visits here during this year's Brain of Britain heats, and I'm joined today by a quartet of keen competitors from the northern half of the nation. Let's meet them with no further delay. Hello, my name's Jim Cross. I'm a horticulturalist from North Wales. Hello, my name's Colin Daffin. I'm a data analyst from Salford. Hello, my name's Joanna Munro. I'm a civil servant from Liverpool. Hello, my name is Paul Pryor. I'm a retired instrument technician from Lancashire. Your questions are worth a point each, and you have ten seconds to think about your answer when it's your own turn. If you can't answer or you get it wrong, I'll open it up to the others to pick up for the point. And if you should get five correct in a row, we award you a sixth bonus point for your achievement. If that's all clear, let's make a start. Good luck, everyone. First question goes to you, Jim Cross. Which Essex-born pig farmer turned TV presenter was a childhood friend of Jamie Oliver and has, since 2014, regularly co-presented a TV series with him? Uh, Jimmy Doherty. Yes. They are a cornerstone of modern science, but how many laws of motion did Isaac Newton formulate? Three. He did. He first appeared in his work Philosophiae Naturalis Principia Mathematica, commonly known as the Principia. Castor and Pollux are the brightest stars of which constellation? Gemini. Correct. Which Roman deity often depicted with either two or four faces was the god of doorways? Uh, Janus. Yes, he was, after whom the month of January is named. Donald Rumsfeld was U.S. Secretary of Defense under George W. Bush, but had also served in the same post under an earlier president. Which one? Mm, uh, no, I don't know. Right, Joanna Munro. George Bush Sr.? No. Yes, Colin Duffin. Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford is the right answer. Yes, indeed, and it's your question. Major characters in P.G. Woodhouse's Mike and E. Nesbitt's The Story of the Amulet both have names that begin with the same silent letter. Which letter? P. Yes, as in P. Smith or Smith. And the Samiad. What is the common name derived from that of a town in Surrey for magnesium sulphate? I have no idea, sorry. Mm-hmm. Joanna Munro. Epsom salt. Is the right answer, yes indeed. And neatly enough, we come to your question. Introduced to Britain in the 17th century, Larix decidua is the only deciduous conifer native to Central Europe. What's its common name? Scots pine? No, Paul Pryor? Larch. The European larch, yes, and it's your question now. In the early 16th century, Albrecht Dürer made a famous woodcut depicting an animal not seen alive in Europe since Roman times. Mm. However, Portuguese explorers brought one back from India in 1515. Which animal? Hippopotamus. Wasn't the hippo, no. Colin Daffin. Elephant. No. Nope. Jim Cross. A camel? It wasn't, no. Joanna Munro. Tiger? It wasn't even a tiger. It was a rhinoceros, of all things. End of the first round. Everyone has scored, which is good. Paul Pryor and Joanna Munro, one apiece. Colin Daffin, two. Jim Cross, four. All right, Jim Cross, let's see if you can keep up the good work. Which notable playwright, whose work includes a 1990s trilogy of plays dealing with British institutions, among them The Absence of War and Racing Demon, created the 2018 BBC TV serial Collateral? Um, no, I don't know. Right. Colin Daffin. David Hare. So David Hare's right. Yes, the other play in the series was Murmuring Judges. Colin Daffin's question. By what name do we now know the shipping area which until the mid-50s was called Heligoland? Dogger. No. Paul Pryor. Uh, German Bight. It is, yes. B-I-G-H-T. Joanna Munro. Iodine crystals give off what colour of vapour when heated? 
purple? Violet. Yes, it'll do. It'll do. Vi yes, violet. But purple is fine. Okay. Which conservative politician killed in London in 1979 was the first British officer to escape from Colditz Castle during the Second World War? Lord Mountbatten? No, Paul Pryor. Airy Neve. Airy Neve is right, yes. And yet again we come to your question. By what name, derived from the region they left, did Zoroastrians fleeing from what's now Iran become known after arriving in India? The Parsis. Yes, they did. The Cambridge Rules, drawn up in 1848, were the first written set of rules for which team sport? Cricket? No. Jim Cross? Association football. Association football is right, yes. That brings us to the end of round two. And this looks rather neat. Joanna Munro has two, Colin Daffin three, Paul Pryor four, Jim Cross five. <laughs> right, Jim Cross, we're back with you. And your next question concerns a piece of music. In 1992, this song by a female duo reached number one in the UK and stayed there for eight weeks. Can you tell me the name under which they performed? Shakespeare's sister? Yes, who were Siobhan Fahey and Marcella Detroit. The name is a reference to the essay by Virginia Woolf in which she lays out why, had Shakespeare had an equally talented sister, it would have been almost impossible for her to achieve fame. Um, according to its common name, on which mountain will you find the species of lily with the Latin name Loidia serotina? Um, Aaron? No. Colin Daffin. Mont Blanc. Nope. Joanna Munro. Mount Everest. No. <laughs> Nothing much you. lives up there. <laughs> Paul Bryan, no. Okay. It's Snowden. It's the Snowden lily. First record of it in Great Britain was made by the Welsh botanist Edward Lloyd, who is commemorated in the Latin name for the plant. Colin Daffin. What sort of premises provides the setting for Edward Hopper's 1942 painting, Nighthawks? Diner. An all-night diner, yes, or coffee stand, right. In the Old Testament, which animal spoke out in protest after her master had hit her three times? Donkey. Yes. Yeah. You, do you have the name of the owner? Did, you, you were right about yeah. the animal. It's Balaam's donkey, yes, or ass. Which element, first isolated in 1808 by Humphrey Davy, derives its name from the Greek word for heavy? Boron. No. Jim Cross. Barium? Barium, yes, from Barris, B-A-A-R-Y-S. Joanna Munro, the so-called Scopes Monkey Trial of 1925 involved the prosecution of a high school teacher for teaching the theory of evolution. In which U.S. state did this take place? Tennessee? It was. In court, William Jennings Bryan lent for the prosecution and Clarence Darrow for the defense. The defendant was convicted, but the verdict was overturned on a technicality. The Pleiades, Hyades, and Praesepe, also known as the Beehive, are all examples of which astronomical phenomenon? Constellations? No. Jim Cross? Meteor showers. Nope. Paul Pryor? <coughs> Star clusters? Star clusters is the term, yes. The name Praesepe, Latin for cradle or manger, you may have heard in Latin Christmas carols, of course. Paul Pryor, we come to your question. What is the name of the political party led by the French president Emmanuel Macron? En marche. Yes, with an exclamation mark, too. En marche. The Mildenhall treasure, a collection of Roman silver, was discovered in 1942 in which English county? Uh, Suffolk. Correct. Servus Nippon is the geographically appropriate Latin name for which species of deer that was introduced to the UK from Asia in the 19th century? Japanese water deer? No. Jim Cross. Seeker deer? 
Yes, it was. And it says here, presumably in comparison to other deer, they're the new seekers. <laughs> but I've decided not to inflict that one on you. It brings you to the end of round three. Joanna Munro now has three, Colin Duffin five. Paul Pryor seven, Jim Cross eight. By our usual standards, it's pretty close as we return to Jim Cross. Which King of England is buried in Canterbury Cathedral alongside his second wife, Joan of Navarre? Um, Edward II? Not he, no. Joanna Munro? Henry III? Nope. Uh, Paul Pryor? Henry IV. Henry IV is right. Yes, indeed. Colin Daffin's music question, and it's a song performed by the British band Alabama Three. It became familiar as the theme song to a long-running, award-winning American TV series. I'd like you to tell me which TV series. You woke up this morning, got yourself a gun. Your mama always said you'd be the chosen one. She said you The Sopranos. Yes, the track's called Woke Up This Morning. The Sopranos, the series about Italian-American gangsters in New Jersey, ran from 1999 to 2007. I wouldn't have thought it was so long ago. Which 1970s rock group led by Ian Hunter took their three-word name from a novel by Willard Manus about the life of a failed gambler? Mott the Hoople. Yes. I always thought it was a corruption of Meet the People, but not so. Which is the only Ivy League university to have been founded in the 19th century? Yale? No. Yes, Jim Cross. Harvard? Wasn't Harvard. Joanna Monroe? Dartmouth? Mm-hmm. No. Paul Pry, have a go. Pennsylvania? No, you've gone all the way around the answer, but in fact it was Cornell. All of the others are older. Harvard was established in 1636. Yale, Pennsylvania, Princeton, Columbia, Brown and Dartmouth in the 18th century, but Cornell in 1865. Joanna Monroe, what do the letters MRI stand for in an MRI scan? Magnetic resonance imaging? Precisely so. Which two bodies of water meet at Cape Agulhas? The... Atlantic Ocean and the North Sea? No. Paul Pryor? The Indian Ocean, the Arabian Sea? Mm, no. Jim Cross? Uh, the Atlantic and the Mediterranean? No. Colin Daffer? The Atlantic and the Pacific? No, no. You've gone all around it. The Indian and Atlantic Oceans. Paul Pryor, it's well known that Justin Welby, the current Archbishop of Canterbury, worked in industry for 11 years before he left to train as an Anglican priest. In which industry was he involved? Journalism? No. Joanna Monroe? Oil? Oil, petroleum, yes, for a time with the French company Elf Aquitaine in Paris. End of another round. Here are the scores still pretty close and going up in steps. Joanna Monroe, five. Colin Daffin, seven. Paul Pryor, eight. And Jim Cross, eight. And at roughly this point in the program, each week, as regular listeners will know, we pause for breath and allow our four competitors to sit back and work as colleagues rather than rivals for a few minutes. We call this Beat the Brains. And I have a pair of questions here from a Brain of Britain listener who stands to win a book voucher prize if his fiendish teasers can outwit our panel. This week, it's the turn of Jonathan Ormond in Ludlow. Our four brains can collaborate and confer on these questions just for a bit of fun, with no impact on the scores, of course. See what you make of Mr. Ormond's questions. They have a linking theme, which will become evident. He asks first... Which author and journalist, much better known in other genres, wrote five detective novels, the first being No Man's Street in 1954, featuring a sleuth called Horatio Green, who was notable for his extremely keen sense of smell? I've never heard of any of them. No, 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 no. The only journalist I can think of is like Richard Dimbleby. Mm -hmm. Kennedy, perhaps? 
Could be, could they go on? It's a little bit Canadian. Yeah. 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 Ten minutes in place. Yeah. Like that. yeah. I'll try your guess. Try it. Oh, do you want yeah. to come? No, that sounds more yeah, sure. plausible. Um, yeah. We'll try Ludovic Kennedy. No, he did write a lot of books. Ludo did, but he was not the perpetrator. No, it was, if you remember this name, Beverly Nichols, the writer and broadcaster whose most successful books were about gardening. He was regarded, as Mr. Ormond reminds us, as a major player in the detective genre in the 50s, but his stories in that line are now all but forgotten. Never mind, here's question two. Which broadcaster wrote just one detective novel, also in the 50s, set in Oxford, in which Inspector Autumn investigates the murder of the Vice-Chancellor on the roof of the fictitious Warlock College? Oh, golly. Doesn't it ring a bell? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Another gardening person. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I... Can't be Alan Titchmarsh. No, it's early work. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sackville Vest, Vita Sackville West. Right, it's, right. Not the, it's a journalist. Yeah. Yeah. It's something like Gilbert Harding or something like that. Yeah. He was Gilbert Harding. Yeah. 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 Uh, we'll try Gilbert Harding. Oh, that's a new name. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's an inventive suggestion. Not right, I'm afraid. It was the man who sat in this chair for so many distinguished years, Robert Robinson. Oh. And the novel, which he was rather proud of, although he was very young when he wrote it, was entitled Landscape with Dead Dons. Well done, Jonathan Ormond. Our brains couldn't manage either answer. Thank you for your entertaining questions. We'll not only be sending you a book voucher prize, but over the airwaves, we congratulate you with this far from mysterious round of applause. <laughs> We do love receiving your ideas for this section of the programme, and although, of course, we get far too many to be able to use them all, we do look at them carefully and select the best. Don't be disheartened if we don't get around to yours straight away. Sometimes it can be the following year before we find room for your suggestions because of sheer volume, but we'll do our best to contact you if we're going to use them. You can send them at any time by emailing them to brainofbritain at bbc.co.uk or by sending them to us on paper using the postal address Brain of Britain, Dock House, Media City, UK, Salford, M50, 2LH. Let's resume the contest then. Fingers on buttons again, everyone. And we start the next round with you again, Jim Cross. On Thursday lunchtimes, it is traditional in Finland to eat soup made with which green vegetable? Cabbage? No. Fair enough, as a guest. Colin Daffer? P. Yes, peas. Yes, known as herneketo. It is traditionally served with pancakes. Colin Daffer, which two major French football teams play each other in the fixture known as Le Classique? Uh, Paris Saint-Germain and Marseille. Precisely, those two. Yes, well done. In ballet, which French word is used as the name of a person who rehearses the choreography and teaches the precise steps and role interpretations to the dancers? The same word also applies to a tutor or coach of musicians and opera singers and sometimes involves a lot of piano accompaniment. Maestro? No. Any offers? No, I think not. OK, the word is répétiteur. Joe Monroe, music for you now, and here's part of the Oscar-winning performance given by an actress from a film musical released some years ago. You have to name the film and the actress. I dreamed a dream in time gone by When hope was high and life worth living I dreamed that love would never die I dreamed that God would be forgiving Anne Hathaway in Les Miserables Oh yes, yes, she won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress for her role as Fantine Well done Charles Beauclerk, first Duke of St Albans who was born in 1670 had two very famous parents Can you name both of them? Charles II and Nell Gwynne? Oh, yes. Apsley Cherry Garrard was one of the survivors of Captain Scott's ill-fated polar expedition. What is the very apt title of his account of this journey? 
in which he vividly describes the raging blizzards and the harsh conditions he endured in his effort to bring back emperor penguin eggs. No, sorry. Mm-hmm. Does anybody... Nobody's read this? Oh. It was called The Worst Journey in the World, generally regarded as a, a masterpiece of travel writing. I once wrote a programme in which Dame Judi Dench had to say Apsley Cherry Garrard, and she said it was the hardest name to get right she'd ever <laughs> come across. It took her ages. Paul Pryor. The term anadromous is applied to the life cycle of certain fish. What does it mean in that context? No, sorry. Okay. Yes, Colin Dufferin. Does it mean returning to the place of birth to spawn? I think, it, I think that's close enough. Yes, it refers to fish which live in the sea but swim upriver or into fresh water to breed. So that's fair enough. End of a round. And look at these scores. Close, close. Joanna Munro, seven. Paul Pryor, eight. Jim Cross, eight. Colin Duffin now ten. OK, Jim Cross, it's you again. The hit musical Five Guys Named Mo is based on the music of which singer, saxophonist and band leader whose hits included Saturday Night Fish Fry and Choo Choo Chaboogie? Duke Ellington. No, Colin Daffin. Louis Jordan. Louis Jordan. Colin Daffin, your question. Flatford Mill, much painted by Constable, stands on which East Anglian River? Stour. Yes. What is the purpose of a diaphoretic drug? Uh, increases perspiration. To induce sweating, yes, but perspiration is a much nicer word. The essential difference between so-called bio and non-bio detergents is that bio detergents contain what very effective stain cleaners? Enzymes. Yes. Which of Oscar Wilde's plays has the subtitle A Play About a Good Woman? A woman of no importance. No. Yes, Joanna Munro. An ideal husband. No. Jim Cross. Uh, Lady Windermere's fan. Is the right one. Yes, Lady Windermere's fan. Joanna Munro's question, though. Straddling the borders of India and Nepal, which is the third highest mountain in the world? K2? No. Jim Cross. Godwin Austin? No. Or prior. Ganchen Jungle. That's the one, yes. And as I think I've said before, the third of anything is terribly difficult to get, but you got it. Paul Pryor, your question, and you're going to hear a song from a musical. Richard Kiley created the role of Don Quixote in Mitch Lee's 1965 musical, Man of La Mancha. But which famous Broadway leading lady performs the show's hit song on this recording? To dream. The impossible dream to fight the unbeatable foe to bear with unbearable sorrow to run where the brave dare not go to right the unrightable wrong no sorry right Jim Cross. Ethel Merman. Yes, she of the brass-bound throat, Ethel Merman. End of another round. Scores now are these. Joanna Munro, seven. Paul Pryor, nine. Jim Cross, ten. Colin Duffin, 14. <laughs> and fair warning to you all, folks, this has to be the final round. Jim Cross, your question. What is the literal meaning of the name of the first satellite, Sputnik? Um, spaceship? No. Yes, Paul Pryor. Traveller? Mm. Voyager? No. No, I don't... I can't give you that. No. The thing is, it's fellow traveller, travelling companion. Mm. Uh, that's, that's the nick part of it, I think. Colin Duffin, your question. Kiruna is the northernmost city of which European country? Finland? No. Any guesses? Jim Cross? Uh, Latvia? No. Joanna Munro? Norway? No. Paul Pryor? Sweden? Yes, you're right. <laughs> well done. <laughs> the town is built on a hill above an iron ore mine, and it's in the process of being dismantled and relocated two miles to the east because the extensive mining has caused huge fissures to appear underneath it. 
Joanna Monroe, what is the name of the 1,800 capacity open air theatre built in 1962 in the heart of Central Park in New York, which has seen a variety of stars, including Natalie Portman and Meryl Streep, take part in shows ranging from Shakespeare's plays to Stephen Sondheim's musicals? The Theatre in the Park? Mm, no. It has a name. Jim Cross? Uh, the Rose Bowl? Mm -hmm. No. No more goes. Delacorte Theatre, D-E-L-A-C-O-R-T-E Theatre. Paul Pryor's question, which chemical element's name is derived from the Roman name for Paris? Lutetium. Yes, Lutetium from Lutetia. What term is used for the process of heating and very slowly and uniformly cooling glass and metals in order to produce ductility and reduce brittleness? <coughs> Annealing. Annealing is right, yes. Sparrows is the literal meaning of the name of which popular game of Chinese origin? Mahjong. Mahjong, yes. What specifically does the word corned refer to in the phrase corned beef? Salt. Yes, corns the corn, corns or grains of salt with which it is preserved. Yes, that's right. Which four-letter Arabic word refers to a valley or dry riverbed in northern Africa and southwest Asia, prone to intermittent flooding during periods of rain? Wadi. Wadi. It's right. Five in a rosa and a bonus mark. Well done. <laughs> and with that, you rounded off the final round and leaving the scores like this. Joanna Munro, seven. Jim Cross, 10, Colin Duffin, 14, Paul Pryor, 16. <laughs> Meaning that we'll be welcoming Paul Pryor back for the semi-finals after that great dash at the end there in a couple of months. Very well done indeed. And don't forget there are places for the top scoring runners up of the series, so it may not be the last time that we see Colin Daffern either. A score of 14 is pretty good. We'll have to wait until we've completed the heats before we can be sure, of course. Our next contest will also be coming from right here at Media City in Salford. I hope you'll be listening. Until then, from all of us, goodbye.